Khalid Sheikh Mohammed ended up in the hands of CIA interrogators. What did he say? Um, I I'll talk to you guys when you take me to New York and I can see my lawyer. But the CIA had something else in mind. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and others were swept up in the high-value detainee program. Secret prisons like this were set up, and several suspects were questioned under new so-called enhanced interrogation techniques, said to include sleep deprivation, extreme cold, and waterboarding, which causes a severe gag reflex as water is continuously poured over the face. You know, the image that's been portrayed as is, is we sat around the campfire and said oh boy now we go get to torture people well we don't torture people L let me say that again to you we don't torture people okay come on so, George we don't torture people college Sheikh Mohammed we don't torture people. waterboarding we do not I don't it's talk torture. about techniques and we don't torture people now it's, listen to now listen to me I want you to listen to me so the context is it's post 9-11 I've got reports of nuclear weapons in New York City, apartment buildings that are going to be blown up, planes that are going to fly into air for, air, airports all over again, plot lines that I don't know. I don't know what's going on inside the United States, and I'm struggling to find out where the next disaster is going to occur. Everybody forgets one central context of what we live through, the palpable fear that we felt on the basis of the fact that there was so much we did not know. I know that this program has saved lives. I know we've disrupted plots. But what you're essentially saying is some people need to be tortured. No, I did not say that. I did not you're say that. You're telling me that I the enhanced that. interrogation. I did not say that. We do not torture. Listen to me. Well, you, you, you look, you call it in the book sense enhanced sense. interrogation you, you, technique. Well, that's what we call I mean, it. That's so, a euphemism. Well, I'm not having a semantic debate with you. I'm, I'm telling you what I believe. Anybody ever die in the interrogation program? No. You're sure of that? Yeah. In this program that you and I are talking about? No. Have you ever seen any of these interrogations done? No. Didn't you feel like it was your responsibility to know what I, you were I signing off on? I, I, I'm not a voyeur. I understand what I was signing off on. Lose any sleep over it? Yeah, of course you do. Of course you lose sleep over it. You're on, do, you're on new territory, but that's not the point. What's this tension? So the tension is... I've just lived through 3,000 people dying. This is not a clinical exercise. Maybe for you guys it's a clinical exercise. Not for me. 3,000 people died. Friends died. Now I'm going to sit back and then everybody says, you idiots don't know how to connect the dots. You don't have imagination. You are unwilling to take risk to protect this country. Let me ask the question this way. Why were enhanced interrogation techniques necessary. Because these are people that will never, ever, ever tell you a thing. These are people who know who's responsible for the next terrorist attack. These are hardened people that would kill you and me 30 seconds after they got out of wherever they're being held and wouldn't blink an eyelash. You can sit there five years later and have this debate with me. I'm, all I'm asking you to do walk a mile in my shoes when I'm dealing with these realities. Tennant says the interrogations uncovered networks and broke up plots in the U.S. Is Al-Qaeda in the United States right now? My operational presumption is that they infiltrated a second wave or a third wave into the United States at the time of 9-11. Can I prove that to you? No. It's my operational intuition. He told us in 2003, terrorists were in the U.S. prepared to attack the New York City subways when bin Laden's number two called them back. By 2003, the intelligence tells you that Sawahiri has called off an attack against the New York City subway system in favor of something larger. What is that larger thing? One clue, Tennant says, is that bin Laden has been trying to get his hands on nuclear material since 1993. Are these people going to have a nuclear capability? This confers superpower status on a networked organization that is not a state. Is it going to happen? Look, I don't know, but I worry about it because I've seen enough to tell me that there's intent. And when there's intent, the question is, when does the capability show up? If Al-Qaeda were to acquire nuclear capability, the thousands of weapons we have would be irrelevant. 